the best showing from Kozo we've seen here in Battlefield. Oh! Cutter! Oh, Cutter! That was my bad. One, two, go! Kozo kicked out! Jobber Nation, good afternoon! What's going on, guys? As always, I'm Janelle from HR here with Sir Wilkins and Mr. Black for our home edition post Royal Rumble A Dubs Smack D Dizzle episode. Black History Month. I'm black, y'all. I'm black, y'all. I'm black. Black History Month black, is upon us. Actually, shout outs to um the girls from um hold on, because I definitely don't want to say this wrong. So we're not live? All right. it, it says live here. Oh, you mean like live, live, like oh, my is restricted, so I can't do go live for twenty four hours for two. Your Facebook is restricted. The Facebook jail, so it's all what right. What did you do? They'll find like old pictures from back in the day and be like, "Oh, nigga, we got you." <laughs> for real? That ha yeah, that used to happen to Michael all the time. So yeah, so I, I told y'all, I'll be telling y'all, delete y'all old pictures. No, no. Now look, y'all should have listened to what I told y'all niggas. Cause like you I shouldn't have to go up. back and delete pictures. Like then what's the point? Like you shouldn't have to do that. I don't look like that no more. So you're not gonna drag like, oh man, you remember this? You look oh, like this? Like this? Oh, you talking about old pictures of your listen, that's the part of your journey. No, he's talking about old pictures of me like smacking bitches or something. <laughs> you smacking bitches? No, but he's trying to make it, that's what he's trying to say. Like, yeah, you got some old pictures of you smacking some whores, and then they're gonna try to cancel you. No, I have no pictures of you smacking whores, Mr. Black. <laughs> There's a picture of you like this. And girls like I mean, is it playful? Yes, it's <laughs> playful. Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm out here, I'm out here, I'm out here. I don't make no no crazy jokes. The only the only one that get mad at me is wrestlers. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, for real, for real. Mad at me. For Nobody real. gets mad at me because because once I fuck with the gay community hard body. Absolutely. I, I like white people. Shots of cutting. Oh, food. I like my I, my 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 illest teacher of all time was a Jewish woman. So I got no beef with Jewish people. No, no, no. <laughs> I love Asians. I love my black people. Ain't nothing to cancel me about. My man, listen, Sir Wilkins is the United Nations of the Java Tears podcast. Love, so I, I love everybody. One of my closest friends or my homegirls is a trans, transgender. Who? She lives in Connecticut. Oh, I love God. everybody. That is true, though. That is true, though. Like, like I, I'm the same way. Like, it's like, all like, love. I love exactly. I'm not gonna get canceled exactly. for that, but Russ is gonna get mad at me for, for saying that this, for saying that I hate them. So it is what it is. <laughs> I hate you. Oh, you spread a hate. No, I'm attacking your character. Separate your character from your real life version. If you can't do that, that's on you. It is what it is. It is what it is. I mean, listen, we we so we love everyone that has supported us. The past almost four years. So whether it's on the highs and lows, I mean, just like old boy that was in the inbox talking about how he couldn't get into legends and calling me all types of names, and I wasn't even there. Oh, you got called names? Yo, read the message. Where I read it Where on you? Facebook. You put it on Facebook? No, it's in our messages on Facebook. I never what? read it. What? I never read. I promise y'all, I never read it. So our page here. Hold on, let me see. Let me I'm surprised y'all haven't said anything. But those, um, once again, that did was able to come to Legends, we do appreciate you guys. So chick, suck my dick, pussy ball headed nigga. You lucky I ain't knock you out last night. And fuck that fat bitch. I'm glad her fat ass ain't show up. I dropped 10k. We don't give a fuck about what you're doing with your customers. Wrong. Fit your shit better. Nobody be coming to y'all trash ass event. But us niggas only pulled up thinking that The Rock was coming. What? Correct. Oh, y'all did niggas wrong last night. Everyone who, who is this is a guy by Justin. So if you're friends with this individual, please let him know that we do appreciate him trying to come and that, you know, he can express himself a little bit better. Then it was Justin Gale. Service yes. Service. So, Justin Gale, I'm very sorry that unfortunately you couldn't come into a bar that you could have watched the pay per view at home on the Peacock, or you so, could have been like me and go. I know who this is. I know who this is. 
Oh, I'll, you know. I know. I think I have an idea who this is. Oh well, so, you know. So so let so let so let me speak first. Let me speak about it. So it was a, a very busy night for for it was. Account. Um, and then. So we were like, okay, you don't have to come. You can come in because we were doing like, okay, you spend ten dollars, you get a free drink at the at the bar, okay. which is a good deal. So so that was it. So then he comes in with his friends and they just stand there. They're not gonna. They didn't want to buy nothing because they didn't have a table. I oh, but like, they were. But they wanted to spend ten k. No, they spent no ten k. They're lying. Wait, 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 wait. Backtrack, 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 backtrack. They was like like um. They look like a rap group a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yo, clearly, that ass, that's no, how he told. Ass, no, 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 no. I'm gonna say something. I had a whole conversation with them. I apologize. All of this. Where was his energy in front of me? You had no energy like that. They were upstairs, yeah. right? No, the, they were upstairs, and after that, they went downstairs eventually. Yeah. So we said, I said, I apologize for this. I was like, yo, you want anything? And then it was like, I was like, yo, just do me a favor, just buy one thing because it costs to, to put the pay per view on. Right. And that's what a lot of people don't really understand the behind the scenes in regards to the viewing parties is that by law, they have to purchase the pay-per-view and that actually oh, is really expensive. Said, yeah, this is him. You pussy ass bald headed bitch. You lucky I ain't knock you out last night. Fuck that fat bitch and fuck that fat bitch. I'm glad her fat ass ain't show. I dropped 10K. We don't give a fuck you. you we don't give a fuck. You're doing your customers wrong. Set that shit up better. Nobody's coming to y'all trash ass events. No one's coming, but you are standing. Standing room only. But I say this in No, 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 again. no. Honestly, I understand why he's mad, but dog, you think but but you were there, you could have left. And where was his energy when I talked to you? <laughs> you I mean, I was I was an innocent. Energy. I was innocent by saying that by default. <laughs> But listen, I love me and I love my team and I know my team holds it down regardless if I'm there or not. So I, I'm sorry that you felt the way that you felt because it's valid. But the disrespect, bro, is not necessary. Cause you, but understand, it's just like, niggas don't, you know the crazy thing about it? I know people who know him. It's t it's actually hilarious. So please right. let anyone anyone that's watching or will watch or listen, please, if you know that individual, just let him, just give him a hug. Show him love, because clearly that's what he needs, because he has to feel like he has to be disrespectful in order to get his point across, and that's not what we're about. So at the end of the day, it's all love. We appreciate everyone that came out. We appreciate everybody that has been continuously supporting the Job of TS podcast. But if you're going to have that energy and be on that type of time, you don't have to come. It is a choice. So no, just remember that. And, and, and then the thing, I'm not going to say his name. <laughs> Y'all niggas already done said his name, but I, I I was gonna say it anyway. But no, I said part of his name. It, it's um, it was just it, I'm not just laughing because there's no need for that. But it's like, bro, like we were very nice to you. It's just they just can't come in there and just not spend anything at all. Just you stand there, Frank. It's something like that. Something but, because because the bar is doing us a favor for not charging anybody to charging us to put it to put it on. Listen, this 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 a this is a business at the end of the day. So we just we just ask everyone to just to respect one another. And if you have an issue, you can always just say. But you know. But it's, it's, all, it's all good. It, it was just funny because you spoke to him and he didn't say nothing to you. <laughs> what did you say to him? He came a little cruel, and I gave him compliments about how that they look like a rap group. We had a laugh, and everything like that, and I apologize. I was friendly to them and everything like that. Well, that's Where probably why he didn't mention you in, in his comment. That's but probably why. it doesn't why. matter, though. It doesn't matter, though. It's principles. Let me tell you something. People don't understand that we all operate like a team. When people, do, people, and now, when you operate like a team, you understand that you just one person, this is all. It looks bad on all of us. I understand that how that, if it was rude on us, I could eat that. But we wasn't. So, so explain that to me. Well, you guys can always message him back. But let's get into... Oh, I actually wanted to give the shout out because it is Black History Month. And I didn't want to fuck it up. So, hold on. Because they had posted it yesterday and I thought it was really dope. So, shout out to Women's Wrestling Talk. Um, They created a collage of all women of color, Black women in wrestling. Um, from content creators... Podcasters, yeah, 
um, content creators, podcasters, people that does, you know, writing for them and things like that. So I truly am humbled and appreciative of the of the women um, that do handle um, women's What's wrestling talk. Again? Women's wrestling women. talk. So make sure to follow them. Um, Stephanie Hardy is a part of their crew. Um, she does do the oh, yeah, A-dubs yeah, yeah. and the SmackDown, I think, recap on Friday nights. Um, but support them, support the ladies, because you know us in wrestling, it's not easy. So make sure to go out and support the girls. But thank you so much for the um acknowledgement. I appreciate that. So I definitely wanted to say that before we get started talking about our Royal Rumble experience. So the gentlemen were at, of course, Legends, as we've talked about. Um, so they have a different point of view because I actually was there in the building in Alamo Dome. Um, 51,000 people in attendance. Uh, where do we begin? What? I said, where do we begin? Where do, where we, do begin? we begin? The show opened with the mint. So it's funny because, so I'll tell you guys a little bit about like the whole, like that day. So earlier that day, right before we were heading to the arena, we had hung out with like shots of Mega Ram. Shout out to Matt Mania podcast. So we were hanging out with some of the guys um, because Mega Ran actually was in town for a game. Like he did a whole concert the night before at a gaming thing. So we all had lunch together. um, And he actually went by like the 2K23 like thing at the host hotel. So he low key had told us that the men's were starting the show. So we already kind of went into it knowing that the men's were going to open the show, which I thought was dope because everybody always had, you know, it was unexpected. And last year, the women actually started the show. So it was interesting. Um, so, yeah, what was, how was you, how was the vibe at the bar as the pay-per-view was starting? The vibe was good, but I think it was also from being at home, the pay-per-view came off very mid. Really? Oh, that sucks. That really sucks. It had its because, ups and downs, like the biggest pop I mean, yeah. was obviously Cody and um Oscar. Oh, and uh, Sammy's like, chair shot. Well, people were like, like I said, I always say the bloodline is the greatest storyline of all time right now in professional <laughs> wrestling. And everybody got quiet. Oh, oh, because y'all wanted to hear. I wanted to Ooh. hear and see what was going on. Like, okay. Like like that moment, you have to understand, when the bar of 300 to 400 people get quiet to watch a segment, it says a lot. It speaks volumes. Mm-hmm. And that's every time they've been on TV, every time. And then now people are doing, like, critical analysis, like, doing essays about what's going on, what's the psychological effect on on Roman. Yo, this has been the biggest soap opera story in years i will give them that because the dramatics and you know we'll get through the card but the dramatics of that ending whoa (laughs) like no like i know y'all we didn't everybody was stuck like we left the arena like what the fuck did we just see (laughs) like what like what we left and feeling and that's why like i don't think the pay-per-view was was made because it you left invested you left wanting to Yo, you left wanting to be like, yo, where's Monday? Yo, where's Friday? Like, you left with that feeling of like, okay, the, now we're officially on the road to WrestleMania. What's going to happen now? And I think that's the that was that's the missing, I think, part at times in wrestling is that enjoyment of the ride. Like, everything has to be like this at times. But that ride and that anticipation, WWE did a bomb job with the anticipation. I'll tell you that. Across the board. I mean, from my standpoint, I got two different versions of it. A lot of people, all right, this is how I felt about it. I felt the pay-per-view was perfect because you have the most eyes during this time, one of the biggest tickets, right? We always got mad at WWE, especially events where, oh, uh, it'd be like 10 spots for these legends. It doesn't do nothing. And then you don't highlight nobody. You understand? Somebody come to work and then miss a perfect opportunity to elevate elevate the talent that you have right there. So to me, not having a rock, not having a lot of big guests, it was perfect. Mm-hmm. You have the most eyes during the time. You gotta promote your product. 
Everybody always talking about how, oh, Vince Page is the same exact guy, da 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 da. But now you take away the legends. We have way too much legends. Like, oh, take away the legends and use the people who are on contract part time or full time. You get upset. <laughs> what? And Brock and Brock didn't take up no space. He continues to be with Bobby Lashley. That was and the perfect. Like, yo. That's why, like, I gotta find out who produced the matches because you could tell that men's Royal Rumble for Walter and Gunther, Gunther entering at number one, mm-hmm. and Sheamus entering at number two was the best thing they could have done because it reminded you of one of the best matches of 2022, and you had at least 90 seconds of that that face off and that rematch in that sense. So that was dope. And then just to your point. Mr. Black, and that's what I think everybody was like in like an uproar about. Like there were no surprises, there were no legends, and I said that wasn't the purpose of this rumble. And I say that because I went to both this year's and last year's, and last year's rumble was the first rumble with actual people since the pandemic. So you got to remember that. So 2021 was when when Bianca won, there were no fans. 2022, that was the first Royal Rumble since the pandemic. That had fans. So their purpose was to bring out surprises. Their purpose was to get fans excited again, just being in an arena. So that was that purpose. The purpose of this year's Rumble was storyline driven. It was to showcase the new up and coming superstars that they're looking to have. For them to have Logan Paul and Rico Booty have that moment, that shit was hot. Stupid. Um, Bobby, Bobby eliminating Brock, the arena shook like i can't even i can't describe that building shook because no one saw that coming and the good thing about that is people understand is bobby and brock is the perfect blend of old and new anybody who watches this year you want to run with they go wait oh bobby last is wrestle wait brock still oh i want you wrestlemania come on hey, even- you still see Ed. Let me tell y'all, when on this day hit, <laughs> baby, <laughs> baby, y'all couldn't tell me nothing. Everybody fucking, because you know what they do? You know what they do? And I didn't realize it because I actually rewatched the men's rumble. I, I kind of rewatched parts of the pay-per-view on my way back home because I was like, I kind of wanted to see how y'all saw it and to see how that feels. Let me tell you, that ultimate pause before the music hit was real because we really was all like, and then his music hit. We was like, oh, my God. I have, I have a video of, of us losing it. But even to Logan Paul throwing out Seth, that's a setup for Mania that Seth going to be on the I don't have a match for WrestleMania again move. And then that that that's a build. Like, I appreciated the stories in the Rumble, in the men's Royal Rumble. I think it couldn't have been any better than that. And being there, every you were, first of all, they fucked up. Because they had us wait until 30 for Cody to come out. <laughs> and we didn't know. Like, literally every number that came out, everybody was like, Cody, Cody. And then, like, around 26, we were just like, yeah, he's going to be 30. So we might as well just all chill out and wait. <laughs> so when he finally came out, and then just the match between him and Walter, and Walter strategically going after the torn pack and making it seem like they were still, like, he he had the upper hand. And then Cody just, like, it was so well produced. That as being there, it was it was an enjoy. It was like, yo, this was a rumble you didn't want to miss. So like, I appreciated the men's rumble for for it being storyline driven. Like it was like, all right, who's next? What's next? What's gonna happen? Um, the next match, and that's why I was that's why I had to watch it again because I felt like a lot of people at home felt the opposite of how we felt there in terms of the blackout match. I still was trash. But see, it, it it wasn't live though. It like I was glad it wasn't long because it didn't need to be. The spot after, first of all, the glow in the dark shit was dope because I was saying there when um old boy was saying the rules, we was just like, wait, so this is just a basically no disqualification match. <laughs> so what are we doing? But then when the lights went out and the shit glowed, we popped. Like we was like, oh, this is different. That's what I will give WWE is they didn't give you. Cause I was like, yo, if I'm not getting night vision goggles, bro, this ain't a dark, this ain't lights out. <laughs> like, what are we doing? But for the glow in the dark, that was different, and that was out of the box, and that was something we didn't need. Like their gear glue in the dark, 
the arena glue in the dark. Like it was like shit was trash. Shit was shit was dope. Shit was trash. But did, so, question: Did it make you want to get the Mountain Dew drink though? No. No, I don't want to drink Mountain Dew like that. No. Okay. So not to y'all, but there were quite a few people that after that was like, "Yo." Even Cody in the press conference was like, "Yo, let me try this real quick." <laughs> like all live on the press conference because he's paid. Fuck it, do he's do what paid. you gotta do. The but, but, but all, but all I don't honest, think it was I, trash. I, I don't. I I, I, I enjoyed it for what it was fuck. worth. Fuck it, I don't. I, low key, I think Uncle Howie's a different nigga every time, so I don't really know who's who. But for him to f- flown down. And that whole sequence was wild. Like we were just like, "What the, the fuck?" Was cool. The ending was cool. The match itself was just like, "All right, whatever." By the way, college that was my drink, Mountain Dew, regular Mountain Dew. I've never had Mountain Dew. How you never had Mountain Dew? I've that's never had that. Bell at Taco Bell, Mountain Dew. I don't. I don't eat. I, I don't eat Taco Bell. The blue one. The blue one. Ooh! Now that's a hitter. That's a hitter. The blue guy, yeah, but the whole blackout match. All right, listen. I see it two ways. Creativity, great. I love it. You do whatever you want, but honestly, it gave me shades of these are the last days of WWE owned by WWE. Because if you watch Heels, they remember they had a title that glow up and everything because the corporation wanted it. And honestly. If Dirty do get sold to somewhere else, expect more he's giving matches. Like, expect like a... Um, they always have gimmick matches, though. Nah! They've always had gimmick matches. Nah, At least one. Up. No, hold up. I think that they're getting more and more ridiculous. Think about it. Hear me out. Hear me out. We had a zombie apocalypse match. Really? We oh, that shit was hard. Them. And The Miz was the only person that really to pull that off. Low key. Well, I enjoyed up. it. <laughs> How do you, you, you just love gimmicky shit? I, I like black too. My wait, thing wait, is though is on, that wait. as a fan, like I just want to see something different, and, and it could be weird, it could be corny. I don't care. Like. I am fine. Entertain me. And knowing how Michael Mizanin is, that shit was hilarious. <laughs> no, no, no. My thing is this: I applaud creativity, but I'm saying this: expect more corporate style matches. Now the next one will be a Lego match. Oh, this is awesome. No, I feel like no. A Dubs had Legos. They always have Legos in wrestling. Is that a Lego sponsor match where everything is replaced with Legos. Yo, if Legos, Legos sponsored a match, whoa! No, no, no. no. Um, more, like better sponsorship, like Home Depot. Come on, the TLC, TLC, she's sponsored by Home Depot. Well, in actuality. If you run the numbers, this was probably the most sponsored pay per view that they've had. It's the most ticketed gated pay per view that they've had. They had Applebee's, they had Mountain Dew, they had um, Cricket Wireless. No, they always cricket. They had Cricket Wireless. Yeah, cr- they always cricket, have cricket. Cricket. No, no, no. But I'm just saying, like normally a pay per view, you only hear one sponsor. You only hear like presented by Cricket Wireless, and that's it. For me. Being there, this was the first time I literally have seen three different logos for sponsorships in one pay per view. Like, like, like Apple for Cricket Wireless. Well, Cricket, Cricket Wireless. So Cricket did Applebee's. the whole pay per view. Applebee's sponsored the Royal Rumble matches. Mountain Dew sponsored that glow in the dark shit. Yeah, that's normal. But then, but I, I don't know what my brother's talking about because WWE has been corporate since like day since that like, <laughs> like public, son. No, you know what I mean. There'll be more corporate style matches. What's that? that? Hold on, and this is I'm trying to explain it. Meaning that you're gonna have a Montreux style match where like how that oh they're gonna use remember the Papa John match they had Papa John's in the match remember remember those so expect more styles like that man meaning that hey we're gonna have a casket match I don't know sponsored by this movie Lord of the Dead and something like that and then the casket will be decked out Lord of the Dead gear or some shit like that. I don't know, but expect more corporate to be more involved in matches. That's what I mean. Well, I mean, as a sponsor, you would want you like think about when people sponsor for Jobber Slam. You want the recognition. You want to be seen. You want the media attention. What I mean by that is that's like 
it's never so heavy, heavy, heavy. Like Mountain Dew, you saw the logo in the ring. You saw the logo everywhere. There was that that that's not common in WWE. That's not at all. They'll mention it. Oh, this match is sponsored by Snicker, da da da. But you never see the logo in the ring. You never see that. It could have been that's what they paid for. But you- that's what I'm saying. Mountain Dew set the tone, so you're gonna see more of that. It might be like all the ref is wearing um um Nestle Quick this that third. You understand? It could be a mud match and it's sponsored by Nestle Quick. Definitely not. I don't know. Matches. But okay, we'll move on. And then after the lights out, I think it was Bianca and Alexa. Trash. That was that Trash. was pretty mid. Trash. I felt like the build up was better than a match. So I didn't I, I mean at the end with the Alexa thing, I guess that's still building, so I guess that's okay. But I'm interested to in seeing because whoever wins the elimination chamber is the one that's gonna be facing Bianca Belair at WrestleMania. So that's gonna be very interesting mm-hmm. to see. Um so yeah, that was pretty just yeah. regular. So that's that. Um, and then after that was the men's was the women's World Rumble match, and mm-hmm. Rhea entered at number one. Liv entered at number two. Um, I I love the fact that they definitely used the NXT girls in this one, and they used the right ones. Not to say that there are you know ones that, but the ones that they that they use Indy's like the OG NXT girl. Zoe Stark is like the up and coming rough. She's like Loki, their Rhea Ripley, and then um, Roxy Perez is their NXT Women's Champion. So like that all for me made sense. Natalia no, came back. It was good. It was good. Um, for me, it was good. I enjoyed it. Oscar, like I said, I got the biggest pop of the night because it went back to old school Oscar. Like it, it, it's once again, I think Oscar is like the one of the most charismatic women on that roster. Like she don't gotta say nothing. She be she be out. Nah, she quiet and everything is in her face. Is all the facial yeah. expressions. So it, it, it's it's a it's a. I kind of hope she wins the elimination chamber. Me too, because I feel like that's the only opponent in the chamber that I feel like would give Bianca a run for her money. If that and I feel cool. Bianca having fought opponent like Oscar, right? Be a different because like no offense, all the opponents she ever had. There was a typical run of the mill type of girl that you you know you treat you go against, and I feel like having Oscar there reborn, yeah. Because I, I wouldn't mind seeing a reign of Oscar on the main roster. Wait a minute, quick question: Has she ever won the women's title? She did the women's tag title. No, no, the women's championship. She did the Raw yeah. Dollars of Money in the Bank match, right? That's the only time she won it. Or She's won time? both. Was she um no? Charlotte had beat her at, at that mania, but she right. went into WrestleMania as champion before. So, and I think she's been SmackDown Women's Champion. You know what? This is you know what? I'm not counting that reign. Let's start off fresh. This is the reign of Triple H <laughs> because you know what? I have to fucking say this. Everybody get on WWE for doing this, but AEW been doing this way too often. The TNT fucking title. No, what? don't do that. Don't do that yet. We not there yet. Don't do that yet. Cause I watched that this morning and I was I was very upset. Why don't were you? Because why did we go through? Why did we go through all of that? Darby Loki was winning. Darby hadn't been winning for months. Darby was on a winning streak as champion to then give the title back to Samoa Joe, which already has a title. Make Dar- that that is not a real title. And then, no, but then for all of that to be... It's not a so, real title. Oh, no, hold on, hold on. We need, we, need, we need to have this conversation. No. We need to have this conversation because y'all be acting because... No, don't do that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's have this conversation right now, B. Let's have this conversation. Don't, don't encourage me. y'all, the internet wrestling community be acting like the ROH championships... Are real titles. They ain't real titles, B. I'm still looking for um Athena. So if you find her, let me know. ROH? Cause y'all really thought Tony Khan was gonna save ROH. Y'all were out here praising him like he was the next coming of Jesus Christ for wrestling. Y'all were talking big stuff about him, like, oh my god, oh my oh, god. Stupid, god. remember that. Remember they call you stupid. They called me stupid. They said, Oh my god, Tony's gonna save ROH. ROH is getting treated like ECW got treated. 
but worse. Worse. Because at least ECW had its own 30 minute time slot, time slot. Chat, yeah. Nah. That's they, we, that's don't get me wrong. The only thing that's been coming out of the ROH camp is banger matches and banger pay per views that wait. nobody watches. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I got a question. I'm, I'm not trying to be funny. Who is our champion? The, the men? Oh, Cesaro. Cesaro. I can answer that. Wait, 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 wait. Mr. Softy theme song is Ari Champion. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Let me get this straight. They never mention it. Ever. He no, don't he come out with the belt. He's never on TV. He's not on TV like He that. only comes out to save John Moxley. Come and on one time they ever say, Hey, come the ring on the champion, Cesaro. So, just to rewind. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm getting this off, bro. No. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no, no. No, no, no. I'm just saying, I'm, brother, I'm just saying, simple words. R.A. champion. I forgot Cesaro was champion. Yo, my man said thought, just say three letters. R.O. <laughs> I forgot he was champion. I'm sorry. That's I'm why. Cesaro. Wait, Fight. so Cesaro's a uh, champion. Wheelie Yuta is the pure champion. Work it up. Work it up. <laughs> <laughs> they say, yo, not to hold you, they say Will Yuta RA champion more than Cesaro. I will give him that. Um, Athena is the women's champ. And then Samoa Joe is the t- TV champ, which is why I'm so pissed about last night. And the six man is... Um, and the six man is um Khan and all them niggas. Oh, Brian Cage and them. According to AEW... It's just Brian Cage. <laughs> Which is funny because his contract is ending very soon. So that's interesting. No, but it's but but we need to we need to have this conference. But the thing is there's it, was, it wasn't the savior. It has nothing new has been done. It's it's a it's a super secondary brand. It but what I will say, we have gotten banger matches, especially the Briscoes versus FTR. Banger matches we've gotten on it, but at the end so you of only get paid one once a month, every other month. Yeah, but the, and at the end of the day, <laughs> ROH hasn't been re, has it has not been reestablished as a as a brand. It's secondary, and, and we all know that secondary. It's a third. It's a third brand. Damn. So my man said, Four. YouTube, Four. YouTube, YouTube comes before. <laughs> it's AEW. It's AEW Dark. AW, um, my man um, said Elevation all the YouTube shit comes. It feels like it because I, yo, they don't. Literally. But yeah, no, that that Samoa Joe shit. They all all that to then bring back Warlow, and it's just like you didn't have to do that. You didn't what? have to do Darby like that. You you didn't have to do that. Warlow was I, I, the thing about. I'm not mad at it because no, nah, I'm pissed that y'all shouldn't have did it that. Should, they shouldn't have taken it off of off of um Darby. Mm-hmm. But I know why they did it because Wardlow got injured. Yes, so let's put it on Darby as a, as a transitional champion, and then we put it back on Samoa Joe so we can have another round of Samoa Joe versus Wardlow. But That's the thing though, if you wanted transitional, that you could have picked somebody else for that. Well, like Darby, like y'all like like y'all know everybody's behind Darby. Y'all. Like I don't even really fuck with AEW like that, but I I, I will ride with Darby on that one. So it's not so you picking one of the pillars of a doves to then only hold it for what a month? Five matches, and, and and y'all quick to do a tournament. So even if y'all want to do a tournament shit, I would have I would have been keen for that more than y'all putting on Darby just as a as an okie doke. That's another tournament shit that they do. How many gauntlets they gonna have? <laughs> Yo, listen, if the wrestling wasn't good... You know what it is? It's because they have so many bodies. That's all you can do, is do six mans, do gauntlets, Royal Rumble matches. <laughs> like, that's all you can do. Um, Back to Rumble. We're going to get to AEW because it's, it's an interesting... They're in an interesting time because they're building to their pay-per-view for next month. But... The only thing they've been building is the MJF Daniel Bryan thing. So it's just like everything else is gonna come real fast and real quick. But um, but all right, back to the women's world rumble match. Um, Sir Wilkins, how did you did you pop about your girl? 
Oh yeah, now you're coming back. Fine ass Nia. I was upset they messed up the entry though. And that's what made me rewatch the ending of that of that because I was like, did y'all see it the way we saw it? <laughs> yeah, it was live. So no, but like it was just on some like, did y'all get the graphic and we just didn't get it? Like, but no, no one got that graphic. Everybody no. got the song. <laughs> Cause the the thing went and then it actually the thing the errand didn't even happen until mid song. <laughs> she had yeah. already came out and I mean I popped because in all honesty when we met her and we were talking to her it didn't sound like she was going back to Russell at all. They threw the bag at her, bro. So low key, I was like, is this a one off? Like, what are we doing? And then the next day we were on our way back home they and dropped. somebody in front of us had WWE shop up on their phone, so we looked and we were like, Yo, Knight has a t shirt already. <laughs> Oh, she's staying, staying. She here for good. But she's still like she's still on the alumni page. That's the thing. Really? Oh, it's interesting. She ain't going nowhere, son. But now, nah, for real, for real, how she like when we talked to her, I felt like I was like, oh, she good. She got her businesses. She all right. She ain't got to worry about wrestling no more. And she actually looks. She looked like she got in shape. She looks a lot. She looked like she lost some weight. So, or she just finally figured out what fucking colors work for her, because that's a thing. Because that gear was hot. I was like, "Yes, Naya, come out!" But um, I look like a whole lot of snack on that shit. I was like, Damn. "Low key." Fine. So the last three <laughs> event next month. You said what? Is she still gonna be at the big event next month? I don't know. You gotta check the website. I don't know. They got the- Hook coming. I was actually like, hmm. I kind of want to be Hook. I ain't gonna hold you. I was like, look, what okay. day is that shoot? I'm it's a week. It's the I think the weekend of the tenth. Is that Saturday? A month? March, yeah. Because the, the like third, that. the fourth, seven. I think it's the tenth or the eleventh. It's that weekend. Um, oh. but anyway, the final three of the women's world rumble was Rhea Ripley, who once again entered at number one. Liv Morgan, who entered at number two, because she was my, she was my my dark horse, and then of course Oscar. Um, the whole, once again, produ- producing a match, I feel like never gets appreciated. And I have to continue to tell y'all how you produce a match. It matters because it shows and it shows how detailed it it, it, it is. So the ending sequence of Oscar throwing the mist at Liv, Liv being blind, Rhea eliminating Oscar, Liv still blind, then kicks her. You make her think you want, you, you don't know what's going to happen. And then Rhea Ripley is now the 2023 Women's World Rumble winner. Um, I knew who she was going to pick already, but I waited until Monday to hear the announcement. Um, so on Raw, she announced that she will be challenged. She is just she has selected Charlotte Flair as her opponent for WrestleMania. So they will be fighting for the SmackDown Women's title. And of course, Cody opened up Raw. And his lispy ass voice, I love it now. And because he talks more, so you don't really hear it as much. But then certain words you do, so it's like, hmm. It's like you practicing, nigga. I see you. Um, Cody will, as of right now, because even deep down, I don't feel like that's gonna. That may not be the whole thing. But as of right now, it will be Cody Rose versus Roman Reigns, royal family versus royal family, at the showcase of the Immortals WrestleMania this year. So. Both Royal Rumble winners have selected their opponents for Mania, so now we're on that road to WrestleMania. Um, And then last but not least, the Universal title match with Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns. It took Roman Reigns five minutes to come down that ramp. We timed it. I don't want anyone ever to talk about Undertaker ever again. Bro, Um, yes. This is is, is Roman. Don't talk about Taker. Oh, speaking about Taker, the Michelle McCool spot was dope. Yeah, because her cool. music hit, and I I looked at Danny like, yo, when did she go to the back? And That's then the when way. the camera panned her still front row and she just took off her gear, I was like, oh, that shit was hot. <laughs> but listen, um, listen. I love it. I love it. Um, but Roman, oh, the Roman Kevin Owens saga, man, it, it was masterful. I think that is the best word I can use. Being there live, like we were all on the edge of our seats. We didn't, I, honestly, I did not think they were going to pull the trigger then. I didn't want to pull the trigger You knew it was coming, but I didn't think it was going to be then, in that moment, how the way that it happened. Mm. I was very, we were all like, crazy, What made it crazy was Jay walking out. 
I think that was like my biggest. I, I was stuck. I was like, oh shit, he left. He said, I said, I. yo, his, because then it left you wondering, like, is he mad at Roman for not listening to him in the first? Is he mad at Roman for going too far? Is he mad at his brother for hitting Sammy and knowing that it was too far? Like, it left with you left more questions than answers. Like, you were just I like, agree. what is going? How do we do this? How do we continue? <laughs> And, and but it, it's it, it, but that's what makes it so good. And then mm -hmm. Roman whispering to um oh solo, we at war. We at war, we're not taking no, <laughs> no casualties. No casualties for prisoners. I was like, oh shit. I said, oh what? shit. God, we oh. all got into SmackDown. And I gotta be a I gotta be an HOG on Friday. So <laughs> oh. Wait a oh I forgot. Is H O G show Friday? Yeah. yeah. I'll come. And I'm Missouri this time though. Thank God, because I really don't like the other place. Uh, I'll pull up. <laughs> Jesus, I hate the other place, low key. But um, speaking about our um, House of Glory, the main event, I hope, uh, will be um, JTG, welcome back, welcome home against Jacob Fatu. Whoa. That's going to be a banger. Um, also on the, on the um, House of Glory side, shout outs to our main event. Um, if you're going to be in the event. Philly area this main weekend, event. Um, they will be at MLW, so I'm so proud of the boys. Um, they're going to be facing the Samoan SWAT team, so that'll be pretty dope. Um, Nick Shin, shout out to our favorite, our favorite ref, even though y'all, you know, Mr. Black is the ref, but our other favorite ref of the Jabatias family. Um, he will be a part of CCW show. It's Saturday afternoon in South Jersey, so hit him up for more information on that. It's Saturday, yeah. It's early though because he was saying that it's an all women show. CCW is an all women show. Um, no, no, he... no, 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 no. Like I don't have a problem going, but it's just like if I, I like if he had said something earlier, I would have went to um because I'm going to Delaware this weekend. That's why. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, well, I mean, yeah. next time it's always next time. Um, but yeah, yes, boy. as the uh, conclusion of the Royal Rumble, um, being there, it was so dope. A lot of fans, fifty-one thousand people in attendance. Um, they used three, four, at least two thirds of that dome. Like it, it was, it was packed. Yo, speaking um, of attendance, speaking of attendance, I did some research one day, right? I like, I don't know how to discover this, but Vince is slick. To get those numbers, you know what Vince does? He counts everybody. If you are in that building, yeah, in the building, he's counting you. Yeah, I, yo, I heard that. I said. Dang, that's fucking smart. That's how technically, technically, technically they in attendance. That's how they got that over a hundred thousand that first time in Dallas because they counted everybody in the fucking arena. I'm not mad. Marketing. <laughs> you do what you gotta do. And technically, technically, he didn't lie. No. Because they said in attendance. In attendance. Word. <laughs> in attendance. In attendance. They didn't, they didn't say like paying customers. See, or they didn't say fans. They say in attendance. Correct. Um, but yes, no. The I, I mean, it's definitely um, when you have those big. I think big events. It's definitely a, a bit of a buffer between being there and being and watching it on TV. Because I, I honestly, it, it was definitely because people ask me, you know, that new I went to last year. Like, oh, what did you think? And like I said in the beginning, I couldn't compare it because one's purpose was different than the others so this year's was definitely the it was the best kickoff i think for the year because you saw the final you know the final three in both matches um gunther beating ray mysterio's time speaks volumes of how they look at him so that was really that was really dope to see and have him accomplish that and even that the post interview that he did he was just like you know this isn't the end you know you know, this is my mistake. You know, one little thing like his promo mm -hmm. was dope. I love um, how you, you said what? Love how you stayed in kayfabe. Yeah, I did too. I just overall, it was such a dope experience. San Antonio, low key, is a dope city. Um, the guy that we, one spot we went to, the guy was like, they're kind of making it a mini Austin. So, like, if anyone's ever been to Austin, they like there's rows of bars and stuff like that. That's really in any city, but they're turning houses into bars, which is really kind of cool. But 
Uh, but yes, if you haven't watched Royal Rumble, please go back and watch it so you're not lost, you're not confused. Um, as they announced, the Elimination Chamber will commence in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, uh, in about a few weeks. So um, are we gonna, um, give uh, uh, are we gonna like acknowledge our tribal chief Roman Reigns as being the real needle mover within wrestling right now? He has main events in some of the biggest gates in WWE history. It is time to acknowledge him as the needle mover, as the as the king of wrestling right now. It is Roman Reigns. When you're but so Wilkins, but so Wilkins, but the ready to get that Wilkins. It is. You know when you did that face, you look like um, what you call it from Living Color. <laughs> It is the highest gate ever. So Wilkins, where is our down? Where is our down, so Wilkins? Definitely. I would love to see what the ratings are for Monday because I tuned in. <laughs> I was like, listen, listen. Watch. The bloodline, like I always will say, the greatest story, the greatest storyline, greatest faction of all time, because they are the true needle movers within this business. Ain't no other faction moving needles like this except for the NWO. But you know what happened with that? That storyline got real trash. Real yeah, quick. I would actually, I wouldn't even give it to NWO on that one because it got real oversaturated. And at least with the bloodline thing, it, it became very selective. Like best thing going on in Russia. And the bloodline and and the bloodline makes sense because you could see Jay and the Usos hanging out with Sammy one day, or Roman hanging out with Sammy. So, so do you NWO think the title? Mm. I don't. So that's the beauty about this. I really don't know. So the rumor is, is that the main event for Elimination Chamber in Montreal, I'm saying that hard for a reason, in it's Montreal different. will be Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns for the Undisputed Universal Blase, Blase, Blase. So one of two things ha to me has to happen. One of them belts got to come of Roman before Mania. One of them. I don't care which one y'all figure out. Y'all want to throw him in the chamber and let that figure that out. But something has to happen. Something has to give. It's time. What the way they should do it? This is this this is me. <laughs> we put the we put the whole bloodline in the chamber. That's wild. Bro. That's wild. Cause it all honestly, I think how, as how many, how many chamber pods? Well, it's four pods, four. and then you start with two. So yeah. you have. Sammy, Usos, and the um solo, and then so, so, so no 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 so it's Roman okay it's, it's Roman Kevin um the Usos that's two solo and Sammy oh that's enough that's enough that's enough yeah so you put them in there in a chamber figure it out with all the titles with, oh, and then he has one the just one. Because in all honesty, I think leading up to Rumble, we were all like, yo, and, I, and it's not to say Sami Zayn is still not the front runner people wanting the title on, but Jay walking out was a game changer. And I, and a lot of people, I don't think is going to realize that, that I think either what they'll do is they'll have the Sami and Roman match, Sami will lose. But in losing, it'll make everybody mentally want him to win more. So that if they do push it to Mania, now that's a bigger pop. It's a bigger an anticipation, and it makes sense. But Jay walking out is the wild card because you don't know whose side he's on. Even that's though he did, even though he did post that he said I'm out. And if you saw on social media, Jacob Fatu responded to that too, and that made me be like, "What are we doing, guys? What are we all right?" Doing? Like sign for the rest of the year. He ain't going nowhere. I yeah, know he yeah, signed yeah. five years with MLW. I know, but you never know. People get out of contracts all the time, B. No, he MLW. No, 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 no. MLW is basically trying to sue Vince McMahon and them because their contract. They're like, they're like, they're talking to the contract in restaurants. That's what's been going on behind the scenes. So no, no and don't forget, and don't forget, WWE was the same one that who blocked MLW for getting the TV channel on Vice. Don't forget that. So I mean, business is business. No, fuck y'all, WWE. So I'm definitely not working with y'all. Sometimes he talks business is business, but then behind the scenes, we have to mask off for people. Exactly. 
People got feelings, B. Anyway. Because I, I definitely I, I definitely said, so who cares what happens? Like, you can't do that. People have feelings. But now she wants to be like Vince McMahon and be a star and be like, business is business. It's the Virgo. It's the Virgo and me. <laughs> you full of shit. You full of shit. Because <laughs> she was definitely was like two weeks ago. No, you can't do that. Can't do what? Feelings. What were we talking about, though? I'll tell you off, Mike. Oh, okay. Because I was about to say, I don't think it has to do with this. It has nothing to do with this. Oh, okay. So then there you go. Different situations. But it's still the same thing. It was business is business. Uh, no, nah, different. But, um, okay, so now we Royal Rumble's done. We're all hot off of the Royal Rumble where they're at Tulsa, Oklahoma for Monday Night Raw this week. As Bailey. I mentioned, As I mentioned, yo, Bailey? What? Bailey? Oh. Pam? Pam wild out. Pam took it there. And now I am invested in this steel cage match that's happening next week on Raw. <laughs> I wasn't invested a week ago. <laughs> I didn't give a fuck about that steel cage. So actually, them not doing it now, it made I'm okay. I mean, I was okay then. Listen, but I'm even better now. Bailey is a goat. Bailey said, Rebecca, let me tell you about your slut ass husband real quick on this live mic. I said, why she do that? Like, sis, really? Like I'm that that's said, honestly I'm that's the first time in a that. while that I seen someone really go real outside of Cody and, and Seth. She went she went deep. No, the worst one was Seth versus um um what's his name? <laughs> um, um um Riddle. So, so you talk Oh, about that's wife, why your huh? wife left? Oh, that the wife that left you, huh? Oh, oh. <laughs> hey, he was like this. <laughs> he was like he was like he was like, "Hey Riddle, Riddle's stupid." I was like, yeah, dude. That's not happy. Yeah. Yo, he didn't know. That's not happy. Yes, sir. Watch Yo, that again. You no, it's mad boy, funny he because like, he really was like, what's up? Like, he really was like, yo, like, that was his homie. And it was like, no, that's not your man's. Not your man's. But a part of me felt like that was a shoot. But that other part of me, I know they approved of it. But, right, but it, it but, felt too real. Like, I was just like, I said, Pam, have you been really wanting to say this for a while? Well, everybody knows that Seth be out here on these streets. Everybody knew that. She knew that before she started fucking with him. So it was like, sis, did you really have to do that on live TV? I said, damn. But, but obviously it worked. It definitely did, because now I am fully invested in this steel cage match that they have low-key not build, but build in 2.5 seconds. So, well, But it, it they did build it up, because and, and this is sometimes when maybe it was an accident, but so last week, it was last week, right? Mm -hmm. When they cut it short because of the blood, supposedly the bloodline thing. The bloodline was, segment I, on Raw 30 went too damn long, but. So they cut it short. That's one. Then the way that they ended it was basically. Um, uh, they got jumped. She Damage got control, jumped. Damage control came in, beat up, beat her up. And mm -hmm. then now. People were pissed off because the segment was cut short. Oh, we want, we want this match. We want this match. We want this match. So then you get the build up for, for this week because now they're talking shit about it. Now, now you actually get the match. So now for everybody that was talking shit about the match being cut short, you wanted to see it. You can definitely see it in full. full <laughs> it is in full entirety. <laughs> next week. Yo, but no bullshit. Where at the event? Where ad breaks? Huh? <laughs> I said, now, now guess what? I got ad breaks and everything. <laughs> yeah, so and like you said, it's gonna main event because it's like my bad main event, even better. Nah, I'm not gonna hold you. When she mentioned the NXT, I I, I low key pop because I thought she meant that they were gonna wrestle NXT, and I and I was ready she for was. that. <laughs> I was ready for it. I was like, oh shit, this is happening. But then when she said, then when then when we then when they said Raw was in Orlando next week, I said, oh okay, it's on Raw. Never mind. <laughs> but um. So you had that, yo. It was just like everybody was on like it's on site time, and I kind of like that. Like Edge fucking with the Judgment Day in that way, on site all the time. Like my man came from the Raptors. He came down from the crowd to come find these dudes. Like, but but it makes sense though because you're supposed to be angry to the people that literally that chair shot your chair shot your wife. You got to be on that type of energy. 
It was a concerto, actually. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so yeah. they killed your wife on national TV for 2.5 seconds. So every time I see them, I have to fight them. Yo, Ella, can we... It just was a spicy-ass raw. Oh. Finn Balor? Let's wild. backtrack this. Let's backtrack this. <laughs> I started a group for up-and-coming people that WWE didn't, you know, didn't appreciate. I used my star power. The pay-per-view that I was on the cover, I made it to a group. I fed y'all. I woke up to the dark side. I took Gangrel's powers and gave it to y'all. Finn, you ain't shit on the main roster. But then like this to you. What you do, betray me, dogs? No, he to my it. wife? Think he about it. You took my man's. You took my godson, Dominic. When I had him like this as a baby. Betray me, son? It's on site. It's like it's Rockefeller. On site. It's like Rockefeller. Legit, because Dane... Even though Dane be, be one to have peace, he don't know how to do it. So it always goes left. No, because Quickly. Dave is like Edge. You know, he he, he put a, he, okay. he put Jay Z okay. on. He put the bread up. He put the bread up. He put the bread up. He put the bread up for Jay. He had Jay pop it. That's like Finn Balor. And then you know, he, and then you know, he go on <laughs> his own. They, they, they made a group. They, they had Rockefeller. Everybody rocking it. You have Rihanna. You got Kanye West. And then. Just like Jay, Jay was like, "Nah, Jay, we don't need you no more." And Finn Balor like, yeah. Yo, so, yeah. but Finn yeah. Finn Balor, that was the spiciest I think I've heard him ever talk because he rarely talks. So when he came at fucking Cody like that, I said, "He not lying." No, let me what, be clear. What, what was he not lying about? About everything you, everything I've done, you've always done. So like, Finn was the originator of the Bullet Club. What happened with Cody? Went into the Bullet Club. Try to be friends with the people he was rocking with. Like he was, he basically said, "Stop swagger jacking me on live TV." And I was like, "Whoa, yeah." We went there, yeah. and he didn't, and he wasn't lying. So that also no, made it. The thing about it, the thing about it though, because you're not, you're not gonna disrespect my man Cody on this yeah. live. You made it a it's Black History Month. I made the hot song. That's what Cody did. <laughs> That's what it's Cody like Jay did. said. Just like Jay said, um, Jay said to the dame, yo, make another one then. That's it. Make another one. Because, because honestly <laughs> speaking, honestly speaking, yeah, you created the bullet club. When I was part of the bullet club, it was the hottest thing on earth. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I began in Japan. I became. He goes. I became. You. You became friends with my friends. Okay. I took your friends and made them a whole, a whole co wrestling corporation. Made them a whole wrestling promotion. Generational <laughs> wealth, B. He made them get generational wealth. What you did? What you did? What, what you did? Finn hopping in Japan. I. I Yo, took but hopping globally. But I'm not gonna hold you. I just did not expect that from Finn Balor. So I was very like, no, oh, I like okay. It. I like it, but I'm and then for them, the main event Raw, I was like, yo, this was the match I didn't think, think I needed. Okay. I'm here for it. But still, but Cody, but Cody oh. did protect him, though. Yeah. He did do three of his finishes, though, to indicate that one wasn't enough. Two wasn't enough. I need three. Yeah, he said, hold, he said, hold that. Wait, 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 wait. I got a question. This is okay. that I see his question. <laughs> so do Finn, Undertaker, and Kane are the same universe as far as demon world? No. Hmm. I, I would think... honestly say the fiend and demon would be in the same universe. Hmm. Nah, nah, they are in the same universe. That's the Undertaker's their daddy. No, now we're not gonna do that because I'm still no, 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 very no. upset at them for making me still think that them that they are brothers. So no, we're not doing that. <laughs> nope. They lied to us, mad time. They Yo, mad time. Edge and Christian. Christian. <laughs> why? Why do I we have to lie? Related. That still pisses me off. How dumb I was. Yo, they play with our intelligence as kids, and I I really can't subscribe to that. Like, as opposed like, to as oh. opposed to Zack Ryder and like um Kirk Hawkins, I really thought that they was brothers. Oh, they you on your own with that? They look nothing like that. Best friends, yes. Brothers, no. Boy, <laughs> when there was the Edge head, they looked just like <laughs> Edge. They was like a tr come on, dogs. But was it because we can yeah. say it? Yeah, that's why. All right, so. <laughs> A W oh, A W Dynamite. Wait, wait. Before we get into the A Dubs, um, I'm trying to think anything else on Raw. Um, oh, they had announced 
early Monday that for the first time ever, the United States Championship will be contested inside the Elimination Chamber. I think that is the dopest thing. I think it definitely elevates Austin Theory. So what was the IC title? Um, Gun- um, Gunther. So what are you going to do with that? Uh, two minutes back now. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Oh no, yeah, right, right. but um, yeah, yeah. but so, but so, Raw was a bunch of qualifying matches. Um, the Seth Rollins and Chad Gable match. Y'all better put some respect on my man Chad Gable because on Seth Rollins, Seth already got respect. No, he don't. The streets don't respect him out here. Ah, she respects Seth. She respects Seth. They don't. They don't appreciate the technical wrestling that Chad Gable gives to the world on a weekly basis. On top of the fact to grapple with Xavier Woods in the middle of the Men's Royal Rumble match, which was dope. So y'all better put some respect on my uh, thank you to my Chad Gable because that match on Raw was probably one of the best matches of the night, if not the best it was, match. It was. My man rolled, rolled him up. And Seth ended up turning it into a pedigree. I said, what? Who? What are we doing here? What is going on here? Great match. So Seth Rollins is now in the chamber. Um, your boy Johnny Gargano won against um, Baron Corbin. So Johnny Gargano's in the chamber. Um, trying to think who else, if they did any other qualifying matches. But once again. The women's, well, 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 women don't have qualifying, but they have. They announced three people. Oh, they had Rumble. already announced. Yeah, so yeah. as I mentioned three before, four, I forgot. Yeah, three or four, the I women's know. Elimination Chamber match will be for their ticket to WrestleMania to face Bianca Belair. On the grandest stage of them all, they already have Asuka, Liv Morgan, um, the returning Carmella. Um, I feel like you it's drop? I'm not, um, Piper, Piper Nevin. Nevin. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, I actually started to really like Dewdrop because it just flowed yeah, a little better. But I like... The person I like, Piper Nevin. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like if you cool. haven't, like in all honesty, those that are watching and listening, if you have not, go back to NXT UK and just watch a few of her matches, a few of her title matches. Her match with um, with um, with the Elba Fire now on NXT UK was dope. Um, just go and check her out because I definitely think everybody didn't take her series being Dewdrop, but she's super talented, like super talented. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much raw that I can think of. Um, but now to the AE dubs. Um, AEW was in John Moxley's hometown of Cincinnati, Ohio, and it took him less than a minute to bleed. So let's talk about it. He bleeds that bleeding. <laughs> that bleeding thing. That is no issue. But I gotta get on the on the production. Sure. Y'all people have experiences collectively probably over 50 years. Y'all talk all this shit, majority on the back. I've been wrestling for fucking this long. Why the hell did you switch to him cutting himself? Stop <laughs> fucking up like this. It's not like y'all students, y'all training, y'all in wrestling school. I could accept that. Like I said before, that probably have a, over 120 years experience. Why keep fucking up like this? Why? This is not funny no more. Because they've done that. They did it with Jericho. <laughs> Jericho, like, Jericho um, bladed himself. They showed that on TV. Right, right, like, right. Like, like other stuff, other stuff, I can forgive. You know, you try to find who's who, whatever, whatever. Cool, that's the wrestling side. But on the production side, no excuse. No excuse at all. None. None at all. None. <laughs> all the time, all the time I watch WWE all my life. I never saw someone cut the um, cut themselves. Did I see the ref slide the blade? Maybe if you caught it. But overall, I never seen one cut themselves. Never, never. Well, so it was the trilogy match that once again I feel like they were robbed. That should have been on a bigger stage. Um, but they opened up with John Moxley versus Hangman Page for their third and I, I don't even know if it's final match, but whatever their third match. <laughs> Um, where John Moxley, where it was funny because commentary kind of told you who was gonna win without without Loki telling you, because commentary definitely hit you with the oh John Moxley has never lost back to back. Why did you tell me that? WWE does that too. Who who gives a fuck? Why did you say that to me? Because now, because now I, I already know who's gonna win. So thank you. I still like hearing that though. 
I don't. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> as, as a different Tell me at the end. Tell me like as he as he's like as he won. Tell me that then. Then I could be like, oh okay, that's dope. In the middle of the match, I'm sitting here like, yeah. Hey, but man, commonly, I, hey, man, but commonly, they do that in sports in general. Like for example, it might be like a free throw to like a, like a free like somebody. See, I remember um I'm a guy. I forgot his name. He played for the Raptors. He played for the Knicks and for the Mavs. I forgot his name. He was perfect for the line. He never missed nothing. And they always mention that when he when he came to the line or like LeBron James. Oh, LeBron James is the 60th, a triple double, whatever. In sports general, they mention that. So to add in that to my wrestling, I approve of that. Because the end I of the like, day, it's still. I, I like it, it a yeah. lot. It, so because it's sports like, entertainment at the, at the end of the day. Still sports entertainment. So, like, for instance, I, I enjoy when they mention, like, like they're starting, which is the one thing I like about the, the Triple H era, they're mentioning people's stuff outside of WWE. So I appreciate that, that they're doing that. Like those little things, that, that, those are my like biggest things of when they talk about what people do outside of the outside and, and their statistics. I like when AEW does statistics. Oh no. God. What happened? So breaking news is sad. And I'm going to try not to be too sad, but Macho's man brother passed. Oh damn. damn. At 68. Damn. Well, dang, that, that's young. That's yeah, it. Hacksaw Jim Duggan tweeted it. Dang. Oh, that's so sad. Dang. He was like my well, last piece of macho. Well, he's in a better place now. Be a minute, Hogan! <laughs> Yo, I, did, I didn't know Hogan had that fucking tattoo like this. I said, the, what the fuck? The that's new, right? right? No, so apparently he's been had it, but I when Raw 30 happened, he opened and he did, and he had the mic, and I saw. It. I was like, "Is he trying well, to be cool? What are we doing? That's new. What are we that's doing new. here? Be a man, Hogan. <laughs> Yo, question: Top five diss songs of all time. Baby. All time. Be a all man, time. Hogan. Question: all Question: time. How you feel about Hogan now? The character, not Terry. Your character, Hogan. How you feel about? He's him? a legend. That's it. I I will re always respect what he's done for the business. He opened up that entertainment side for the business. So I will never take that away from Hogan. But I'm not subscribed. So it doesn't, I'm good. All the way. Yeah, me too. Super good. Yeah, too. But all right, back to the A-dubs talk. Um, so yes, the opening match was John Moxley versus Hangman Page, where John Moxley came up with the dubs. Um, but the... The at, well, Jim Cornette calls it the afterbirth, which I always find funny. After the match, it just, I don't know. What did y'all feel about? Like, I don't know. Like, the whole middle finger in and going back and forth. It's just like, what are, what are we doing? Like, it, it, so, so this is, so, so, so this is my thing. It gets a little messy and very much unorganized. Yeah. yeah. It goes yeah. a little who left? Where it's like, all right, we should cut this now. But that's but, but that's why you need better producers. See, because mm -hmm. if it was me, honestly, the match would have ended in a DQ. Yeah. I, I would have honestly, I would have dragged it to Revolution. I would have had it a DQ, and they just still would have been fighting because that's what all they've been doing. Low key is like on some on site shit. So it's like that mm -hmm. match. They didn't even start the match at in the beginning. They was fighting outside. <laughs> so. Didn't. So I, I really think the direction of that should have been a DQ to then continue it because the way it ended, it just left me being like, what? Oh, okay. What are we doing? Like I need a screen protector for my iPad. I need one. Figure that out. Um as I well, Sir Wilkins, what else happened during A Dubs? Because I only really watched so, clips. Well, well, I didn't the, really So um we had the Roosh versus Brian Danielson mask coming up. Wait, uh, Tim Tim didn't wrestle Daniel Bryan? Ooh. Timothy Patrick wrestled him. Okay. Roosh. And then, you know, MJF came to him and was like, yo, here's some money. I got you, dogs. And Roosh was like, oh, 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 El Grande. I need this. No, he didn't. No, he did not. He said, El Grande. He said, El Big. He said a bunch of Spanish words. And then, like, <laughs> I can't say it. So that's all. I only know El Grande. El Grande. <laughs> so what? Why so, was that so, the only? So the thing is, I actually liked the segment because Roosh did his thing, and so did MJF. It was actually a pretty good segment. Now, this is my thing. 
this whole shit is getting pretty basic. It's actually it's, it's been basic. And, and it's 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 good. Like I like white rice. <laughs> but <laughs> white rice is the most basic thing you can eat. So I like this segment with MJF and Brian Danielson, but the shit is white rice. But it made no sense though either. It made like, no sense. No, but but the thing about it, I, it's the same thing he's done before, where he had uh, his opponent go through other people. Yeah. No, which... no, 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 no. I don't have a problem with it. I do, but that's not a tissue. My thing is this: <laughs> yeah. you just had a fight backstage. Why are you mad, calm, talking? Why are you not ratted up? Why are you closing out like wrinkled this this that, and third? It literally. Just happen. You're close. Yeah, but the thing about it, it's white rice. There's no sauce on it. It's basic white rice. There's no. There's no meat. It's just white rice. This is. This is. This is what happened where you appropriate someone else's gimmick. You don't know how that works. So it's it's. I I don't have a problem with it. I I watched it. I was like, oh, this is cool. Like. It was a cool moment. It was a, it was a nice little exchange between the two. Now, um, the Jade versus Red Velvet match. Woo! I'm glad we're here. So that was my Bye. favorite. Okay, Red Velvet between for Jade. That was probably one of her better matches, and I, and I think it's because like you mentioned it off camera, where they know each other, they probably practice with each other a couple yeah. of times. Also, so she was more comfortable in the ring. The size difference plays a factor. So, but but it was one of Jade's better matches. I know you had an issue with, with the match. So my issue is not with the match per se. It's the fact that once again we here we're at what it, what they were alluding to her fiftieth win. It should have been a bigger deal. It should have been a bigger feel. It should have been on a bigger stage than just regular ass anime. I mean, thankfully it wasn't on Rampage because even that I would have probably been even more upset about. But you have. This charismatic, she has the look, she has the talk. You can build her, you can work with her, you can mold her, you can do all these things. But then you lack luster and don't give that big fight night feel that she deserves because that's always been her montage of being that bitch. So at the end of the day, you guys putting that match, and it probably was at the top of the, of the hour, the second hour probably. But oh, regardless... No. Like, it was like mid hour. Regardless, the match should have been on a bigger stage. The match should have had a bit a better feel to it. It should have been a better build instead of her kicking out the baddies. Because we actually talked about that. Shout outs to Mimi and Siendo that joined me on the big four, the, the re-release of the re-emerge of the big four. We talked about that. Um, where Jay just doesn't have the the moments. She just has a match. She wins. We move on. We don't get that fanfare. We don't. We don't get that. Like this is a bigger deal because it is a very big deal. She is a woman of color that has been champion longer than anyone in that fucking company, and she has not been defeated. And that should be acknowledged on a totally different scale than just a regular ass dynamite against a, a former baddie. That could have been built. Then they were slowly building it. And then they had the match. And it was just like, because now once again, who now what do you do? What's that? I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you, but I'm gonna look at it from a different alternative, right? I just I like I'm not disagreeing with you. I agree with you a thousand one percent. But let's look at it a size of a business person, right? Jade matches is literally a hit and miss. You don't know what you're gonna get. Correct. Right. There is more of a chance that you may get a it's okay match. Some cases looking like dang, that is bad. And and in and, and some cases you get like, all right, that was good. As a business person, I cannot like I cannot risk closing out my um 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 closing out my um a weekly show with that kind of math with that with that kind of pressure, knowing that it could be a real hit and miss. That's one. Two, her 50, how many times that she fought red velvet? 500 different times. Oh, she definitely a, faced her in the beginning stages of that street. I definitely right, remember that. Right, right. She faced the same exact opponent. So it's just it's just kind of like it's another routine to the whole situation. Now, if she was finding someone brand new, I could see that 50 being, being 
being being more big. I think that they did a good job with it, but I also feel like they need somebody that know how to book the women division because the baddie storyline should have been way bigger. It should have been I'm bigger. Talking, I'm talking about she. The baddies come with her everywhere. You feel me? Like, like, like a real entourage. She does interviews. The baddies come with her. You understand? Hey, you know what? I'm going to let's say that Red Velvet is at a big time any event. I'm going to show up to support the baddies. It should have been bigger. Who follows that? I don't know. But at the end of the day, you it should have been bigger. That is, you know whose fault that is. I, you do. I don't know. You do. I don't know because do. it could be okay. It could be Tony. I like like I play blame on Tony Khan and I also play blame also on Jay. Because hey, listen, I want to get big. You do the stuff that make you stand out. Listen, Jade is an afterthought. Jade is an afterthought within when it comes to the titles. She's safe with the team with the with, with the Anyone TNT know that title, TBS title. Um, it's that's just what it is. She, she's just an afterthought when it comes to the titles there. But that's all. In all honesty, that's their women's division. And in all honesty, when because you know I love me some Jim Cornette, and when they review the ratings, even though I really don't really believe in ratings, but that's either here or there. The ratings drop every time there's a women's match. So the but, the miss the mishandling of that women's division is on the person that books the fucking show because but, if you don't make them a priority and you don't showcase them in a way for as fans for us to be invested and for us to care then it's then we're not gonna sign up we're not gonna subscribe. All right, fine, all right, fine, all right, fine. All right, Janelle, all right, Janelle, let's have a real serious conversation. Outside the most obvious people, like my brother said. Who else is a move a needle mover in AEW women's wise besides the obvious? Nobody. <laughs> there's no there's nobody there. They haven't built and it up. That's I, the problem. That what you just said. Say it again. They haven't built up anybody else. And, and that's the problem. Of this numerous times. The but then the thing though, and this <laughs> is what I don't like, is Jade gets the, the, the bottom of that fucking stick because he doesn't know how to build a women's division for as fans because your majority of your base are white men. So your audience, you don't know how to balance that. You don't know how to create uh, for people to be invested in, in, in a women's match. And then you think throwing in the Asian girls is going to still do something, and it doesn't. Sorry, it don't. Okay. So, okay. No, no, no. It's true. That, okay, let's have honest conversation. It Nets, don't so Nets flipping. Okay, what else happened on any of those? Wait, wait, wait. Well, Nets flipping more of a positive the side. Part. Wait, wait. Nets flipping more of a positive side, right? Who are the girls that you think are a need a movers but just need time? But 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 we but the thing They've about had it, time no, though. The, That's the thing. There's no there's nobody there's nobody on that roster besides Will. And we've spoken about this numerous times. There's nobody else on that roster who's who who's been given it. it it's this is my opinion, and this is just me being around it. It's a fifth. It's a sixty forty thing: the booker and the talent. So if you don't book the talent to do matches and, and build them up, you're not gonna get growth. You're not gonna get growth, and 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 them being put over. I agree. So it's just, it's just sad. It, 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 <laughs> if, if, you're, if you're not booking them the right way, and also the talent's not the talent's not there. To showcase, it's not. But then also, a lot of their fans don't like women's wrestling, don't respect women's wrestling. They, they pretend like they do, but they don't. Correct. I put a tweet out the other day. I was just like, more men support the WNBA than women. Oh, I did see that. And that's and that's in wrestling too. Like honestly, I think, but I think a like, part, uh, not a part. Well, I mean, it's a, diff it's a different way. But the thing about it is the just a little, just because, like, as you know, most men enjoy basketball, and it's not to say women don't, but that plays a part into why more men would be invested in a women's basketball game because they already like the sport. It's just now somebody else. Let me ask you a question, Janelle. But but hold on, do hold you hold watch? On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You can casually watch like like you watch a men's basketball game. Mm. Let me ask you a question, Janelle. What's the last time you watched a WNBA game? I don't watch NBA. 
So that they, okay. there's that. Like I'm not like basketball isn't my sport. I would watch football oh, okay, okay, okay. before well, I watch fair, basketball any day that's of the fair, week. That's but, but that's it, what I mean by like if I if I, I have if I was to watch in, in like basketball, then I would dabble into basketball across the board because it's like in wrestling. If I started off watching wrestling and it was just men and now women enter the scene, that's an nah, easy you transition. Do. You support no 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 honestly, honestly, like I have to say you and your crew, like y'all do support women's wrestling though. Like y'all support a lot of women like, don't right support here. Black but a lot of yeah, here. but but to the yeah, point right. though, a lot of women don't because their first interaction with wrestling was always men. So that transition for some people is really hard to sign so, on to sign on so board. That's a question. I'll just say this: since it is Black History Month, it sounds <laughs> fucked up. Do you think that it's hard for fans who started watching white wrestlers hard to enjoy black wrestlers? Since you just said that, I'm. I'm just we're no, talking. no, no, because because I think it's more of a gender thing, in my opinion. Yeah, like I feel like, and especially Loki in the South, it don't matter if you black or white. If you're a male, I think they they would fuck with it a lot more heavier than if the if the female. Like if you think about it, there's always maybe one. Like Dynamite, how many women's matches was there last night on Dynamite? The, one. I, the whole time I saw up to I saw the mocks and I saw some. I was in and out. So there was one women's match and one women um segment. Women's segment. Well, the match one, right? Yeah. The week before. How many women's matches was it? I, the week before. One, one, but the point I, is though, one, if it's not one. in a consistent, but if it's not yeah. in a consistent, like look at look at and, and it's not a comparison, so please bear with me. But if you look at WWE, and as much as people want to always say they don't represent women, they don't do this, they don't do that. They are more inclined now, and it's a and it's been a progress. It's been it's been a journey, but they are more inclined now to have women main event. They are more inclined to have on NXT. I promise you, there are more women's matches across the board than any other promotion on yeah, NXT. That's just that's just what it is. But I think, but I do think in terms of I think it's more on the gender side. I think as a fan, you will be more willing to watch men than women. That's the sad part about it. Yeah. It's across the board, across women's basketball, women's wrestling, women don't support as much as they 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 they, they say that they do. But that's a part, just, but a, a part of it is that like there's no, you have to, you have to keep me interested. You have to keep, like as a as a as a, I'm only saying it as a woman because it is the same. It's 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 the battle that I have with Jade. It's the internal, like as a black woman and being one of the pillars of that company, I absolutely want the best for her. I absolutely want her to shine. I absolutely want better for her. But it's like, fuck, if y'all don't do, if, if y'all have all the pieces of the puzzle, they're just scattered. If y'all don't start putting the pieces of that puzzle together for her to be a, a noticeable person, it does, it's not going to matter. She has 50 wins. Yeah. What moment can y'all think about that y'all was like, yo, No, 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 no. I'm gonna really think about this. Match wise, there's none. But and that's even worse that's because, because but that's but that's even worse because as AEW pushes that they are a professional wrestling company, one of your top women that, that is undefeated, there's a disconnect on that professional wrestling side. And yes, it's gotten better from whoo. From one match one, <laughs> but there's still no type of real challenge. Like they gave her um Roddy's wife, she beat her. They gave her um Nyla, she beat her, even though I really think Nyla should have probably won. That's just me. Every like big wrestler or technical, physical they put in front of her, she's beat like this. But then there's no story to it. There's no character development to it. There's no how do I stay inv invested if you guys one one week she's on dynamite, then two weeks later she's on rampage, and then you don't see her for another two weeks. There's no you know consistency. The problem is, you know, the problem is also with Jay too. There's again, I, I like again, I'm just saying this. Her character hasn't evolved since the day that she got there. I'm talking about when she came with Shaq until now. It's just been like this. And like you said, there's no storyline to make her character progress. Correct. I don't have reason to care about her no more. I don't. But you, but no you reason. saying, but you saying that I'm pretty sure there are thousands of other men, 
that watch AEW that feel the same. Honestly, for example, that storyline she had was with Nyla. Correct. Yes. And that yes. was why Nyla should have won because yeah. then you could have flipped it and have her come back and that comeback would have made everybody invested in Jade. But you didn't do that. For whatever reason, you didn't do it. And that's fine, but use that formula that you did with Nyla and apply that shit to every person now that she goes again so that you now feel invested in what the fuck's going on. Maybe. And it's the same with Jamie Hayter because I mentioned that a few weeks ago. It's the same thing. Same thing. Personally, I think that Jade should lose, come back, and refresh herself because honestly, she's stale. Do the like, Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Do the Daniel Bryan, bro. Yeah, like, like, there's nothing. Like, again, she has everything, but bro, all right, bro, you're the hottest woman. Like, you're not a rookie no more. Now, to me, she, to me, she's in her sophomore slump as far as record sale. You know, your Ooh. first record, it was hot. It was on fire, had a club jumping. The second album looking like, I right, you like the baby. Every track, every track is the same flow. You haven't evolved it. And even and again, going back to what we talk, what I talked with the girls last week about Jade and the whole baddie section. Cause Mimi mentioned she was like, I really she didn't really like that she kicked the girls out of the baddies, but because it, it represented like it didn't it didn't show a good representation of us. And I felt that. And I said, Okay, but if they would have done it differently, I think maybe she would have felt a little differently but when it comes to her it's just like they, they don't know she, what to do with her and and that's what frustrates me because it's like y'all put this title on her y'all gotta do right by her and y'all haven't y'all gave her an undefeated streak that no one can tell you a moment or a match outside of her gear and her hair changing and that's said that. wild to, but that's wild to me if that's the only thing that's memorable that's wild. No, it's a, a lot of people remember her that her little botches in the ring. So does that count as that no. ring word? That no, that, that is that actually is, that makes it worse. <laughs> like her on Bacho Mania, that's not that's not good. No, she don't feel like a big deal. And honestly, she needs to either disappear for a little bit, evolve her gimmick. Because okay, fine, she literally has. The whole formula. She is a dominant black woman. She wins a lot of matches. She's charismatic. She has a good spirit. She has a daughter. Come on. Come on. She's the breadwinner of her household. No, she her, 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 her dude got money because he was a baseball player. He got money somewhere. But regardless of the fact, they yeah. both two two yeah. income households. I'm all about that. I'm sorry about that. You know what? She's an example of a black excellence. They together as a couple raising a little girl together. This is money making. Why she not on the Jeff Hudson show? You understand? Why she not on Hot 97? She, Why she, she, not on the is, she Club? is though. She is though. She's been on the Breakfast Club. She's been on Trick Daddy show. She's been on a couple of other stuff. She has been doing the thing, but I think it's through her um Man, she been a boo like Kev show. She been a boo like Kev show. But then again, I feel like, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like, honestly, it's just, yo, I, maybe, maybe she just taking it as like, maybe her man, I, I don't know. You, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, I just feel like what it comes off is just like, yo, she's just doing what she have to do to get to somewhere else. This is, this is to me is, a stepping stone to something bigger. And that's what, and that's what, no, 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 no. It's not that, but I just feel like that's what it comes off as. Like, this is something for something else that she's just doing. I'm not saying that's how she is. I'm not sure how she is. And that's not, that, honestly, that's a mindset. But when you're just watching a casual friend looking like, I feel like she's just going through the motions until, like, I, right, my contract is up. I'm going where someone else to make more money. It sounds like how that she's just on a contract year. Because it hasn't evolved, nothing had changed about her. Her in ring work, and then is and then high. they and low key they dropped the ball, especially with Willow when she came into the picture. Because even though Willow lost, they still could have continued that, and they could yo they could even put they could have put Willow in the baddies and let that been something, and then flipped it, like on some bloodline shit. If you really if you really wanted to go down, it could have been something totally different. Imagine 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 if you see Willow in the whole baddies outfit, you look like. They go, hey, it's gonna shock that that'll shock everybody. Willow, what the 
everybody like that. Not Sal Willow. Nah, what else are you innocent? You changed her. And then instead Ooh. of and then instead of and then what they and then if they did that, then they could have had them kick Jade out of the baddies. And then Jade could have been the mega face that they really low key looking for. Listen, we go all day. But I'm just saying they doing her they doing her low key dirty. And I can't subscribe to it. I listen, sis, I want better for you. I, I wanna sign on. I, I I and I'm a fan and I love what you represent, but they're not doing you right. And you may feel like it's okay. Cause you listen, it's cool. But as a fan, sis, something gotta change. Something has to happen. But um, but okay, that match and then what else happened on eight dubs? It was um the the, the main event was um well, my ten ten. Was Samoa Joe versus Darby Allen? Darby Allen. Yo, like I mentioned earlier. I think I think we spoke about this in nauseam for the most part. Where I understood what they were they're trying to do. How Darby Allen was a, a transitional champion because they're working back for Wardlow versus Samoa Joe. I think that's what that's what they were trying to do, and it's just Darby Allen is just is just is just collateral damage. My man, yeah, my man Darby was a casualty in war. For what? For what? Like it upsets me because yo, my man has given blood, sweat, and tears to that company, and for that to go down the way that it did, it was just like yo, yo, he don't deserve that. If anything, mm. you might as well give Darby Allen the, the pro championship. <laughs> something with it. Something. Let's Stop. Cut it out. <laughs> Cut it out. Not, does not exist. Actually, before we do wrap up, I want to read. So it's not like RH is old school TNA. It's just like pay per views. That's it. Well, so, yeah, because they're going to do Supercard so, during Mania so like, Weekend. If I want to see RH, I got to pay $40. Every so often, every other month, you gotta subscribe to it. you gotta subscribe to Honor Club. That's what you gotta do. But wait, wait, wait! Do the Honor Club have weekly shows? No, no. So not yet. Same, I don't think. So with that same ten dollars, I could take and go to title match. I have federations all over the world. <laughs> but um, also too on the AEW side, it was announced that they will start doing um house shows that they're calling house rules. I'm gonna hold. <laughs> that is <laughs> lazy. Niggas is lazy. <laughs> like I'm just like house rules. Is it a pay per view or are we playing spades? Like what are we but that doing? Because the company is always about casino type of thing. All in, all out. Now we're calling God. Rules. It goes double or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, does Tony Khan have a gambling problem that we don't know? <laughs> Revolution. <laughs> I'm glad That's actually, like a slot game. Full gear. Oh, those, those are the slots. The slots. <laughs> oh God! AW, like, like I said, AW <laughs> casino theme. Like, like everybody knows that. That's that's why they go in house rules. Nigga, I don't know that, and that that's just stupid. <laughs> no, it makes perfect sense. You, I, <laughs> yo, y'all need stupid. I'm not gonna hold you. You breaking it down makes so much more sense. But as the casual fan, bro, <laughs> that shit. Stupid house as rules, as double nothing, revolution, I was... <laughs> full gear. <laughs> all out. <laughs> <laughs> they had to oh, do the, the opposite. One. They had to yeah, do the opposite. All, all in. Now, all now, in. now I'm all out. <laughs> and I cashed out. Actually, cashed out could be their money to pay people <laughs> that you win, <laughs> and a big Sonic circle you win. <laughs> Yo, he really has a fi- uh, he Yo, has a fixation with casinos. I Joker never cars, thought about it. The Ace, the club, the Joker. <laughs> Come on, V. Come this on, is v. actually way funnier than it needs to be, but it it, it, it tickled me because I was like, oh, shit. I was like, oh, lucky, seven lucky seven. Straight. We lit. We lit. <laughs> lucky seven. <laughs> we have a new tournament. The lucky seven. Right. Yo, that's probably lucky like for the trios. Time. The trios, the trios tournament shit. <laughs> lucky seven because you need three sevens to be lucky. <laughs> So each match, so each match, you gotta get a seven card. You, I have <laughs> over three sevens, I'm and a three myself. seven will guarantee a trios match. That, yo, that's I know, Wilkins, that's I know it's not. It, yo, it's so so funny, Loki. Like it is hilarious because I would have never played. I was, you do, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense, but it's too stupid to fuck me. But um, so yeah, so they're doing. 
So they're doing house shows now, which is what they hired Jeff Jarrett to do instead of being on TV. <laughs> but I love it. I love Jeff Jarrett. So I don't really care. No, no, no. He's no, 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 no. Honestly, I, honestly, Jeff Jarrett, um, Billy Gunn, all those old heads that's involved in the storylines, they definitely been entertaining story. Like, cause shouts to that claim versus the ass boys. I mean, the, the Gun Club. Come on, you gonna walk out as us for your pimp? Yo, he said. <laughs> he told him. He said, you don't even know how we grew up. You was never there. You were on the road all the time. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> That's how they... And you know what's funny? That's probably how they really feel. Low-key. They probably really feel that way. So that and felt he real. Said, like, he said, Dad, man, you're supposed to take us on the road. But you take them. He said, you you take them. You pick them over us. I was like, ooh. Like, the thing about AEW I hate is it's super good right here. And it's just bad right here. There's no middle grounds like there's no middle. Yo, it's either you and that that's my yo, that's my grip too. You pick and choose what you really want to pop. But you that's know, like um WWE. Nah, nah, nah. nah, 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 nah. nah, nah. As of lately, as lately, I said like middle grounds. WWE. Oh, my, 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 Oh, you my, said my, 07? Yeah. You sure like oh. wait, 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 wait. I have a question. Is Tony kind of cancer or something? Because his mm-hmm. movement is, is very cancerish. <laughs> Very, well, like, okay. as Seth Rollins said, Phil Brooks is the cancer, the real cancer. I'm not gonna hold you. When we watch that clip at lunch, I said, "Yo, if CM Punk's music hits, this whole there there will be nothing left for the bloodline shit at the end of the night. <laughs> there will be nothing. No, 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 no. But like, there'll be nothing Seth, left. Seth Rollins makes sense because Seth been with him when he was in Seth. This Rollins. nigga's a Libra. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. That October makes sense. 10th. He's that, a Libra. You know what? You know what? That's our sister birthday. So you know what? No, no, no. No, no. That's our mom's birthday. That explains a lot. That explains a lot. <laughs> Shout outs to mom, mama, mama, Haitian mama, mama over there. Mama Jabba. That came there, came through job, came through to the show. She was so nice. My sister was there too. Shout out yeah. to my sister. Yeah. No, it was a family affair for sure. So, oh, if you if you did not, I I, I got to double check if it's on time to match now. It's on time. But, I was watching it yesterday. I showed my. Oh, it is me. okay. Good. So yeah. those that were unable to come to welcome to New, to Battle Club Pros, welcome to New York City show. I got title match right. Ti- I don't. I um, it is up on Title Match Network. So make sure to subscribe. This one's okay, like yeah, I don't want to watch anything that I'm involved ever again. <laughs> He's so hard on himself. Don't worry about it. But um, oh, before we go, I wanted to actually. Oh no 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 no! Before you end this, shout out to my son Brian Cage out here playing for a contract each and every week. Week he put on bangers after bangers to catch ya. That's my new favorite wrestler right there. To catch ya. I'm not saying it's wrong though. So what is it? To catch ya. To catch ya. The one that Brian. Oh, Cage you talking about that? Oh. Yeah. To catch Jim Clarnett calls him take a shit, so I I won't do that. But no, 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 no. But nice, honestly, nice. no. But phonetically, it Loki does look like that. So I I got it. But I was just like, that's, that's yeah, fucked yeah. up. But like, shout out to him having that fire match with Brian Cage. I thought he said Takachi six. I was like, who was he trying Takachi, to say? Takachi. Listen, luckily I didn't call him Tekken. All right, whatever his name is. Listen, he put on fire man. matches. Brian Cage. That match yesterday was fire sauce. Again, WWE would love to have you, but go back to Impact because you probably will be WWE, there. we don't need, like, what they going to do with him? Oh, 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 I got a question. I don't want to ask you to fuck it. It's Karrion Cross. Karrion Cross. what was his reaction? Yo, it was crickets. I felt so bad. I felt so because I listen. I, I'm a fan of Killer of of, of Killer Crow. Like I I've ride with him since Impact, so I'm a fan. Me too. Me too. Me too. It was quiet. So like I felt like it? I was like, damn. So we got what a big seen? pop to him. <laughs> you got a pop at the bar? No, I'm talking about at, at, at our match. Yeah. Hell so, yeah. So 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 so. Let me ask you guys a question because I try to figure this out the bar too, right? What is he missing? I think people unsubscribe from the mass shit and hasn't come back from that. Because his run in NXT was not bad. And everybody was riding with him in, in Scarlet when he was on NXT. Then he got injured. 
But I think when he debuted, I, it's from the debut. I think it's just been downhill since then. I think everyone unsubscribed from there. So, so this is my thing. He needs to cut his hair. I the hair is cut. He needs to cut. No, his no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Before he was bald, he needs to shave his head. He needs to shave his head. Why? I like how he looks now. He looks. Carlos, Carlos, lucky. He's fine as fuck. Um, he's and I don't even like Spanish dudes like that, but he's hot. He's not relatable. That's the problem. What's like? What you not relatable? What makes him? What makes him? What makes him? He's too pretty. What makes? He's too pretty. He's hot. He's too pretty. I subscribe and, to that. Come off as somebody's gonna fuck me up. It's hard because he chokes them out, and that that's believable. Yo, yeah. he's mad, brolic. He's tall. So how do he fuck you up? Nah, nah. But I think I think more of the character. You don't know, like it's hard to connect to the character it because it is a connection thing. Yeah, because he's too good looking. You have um, you have Goldilocks hair, beautiful eyes. Nick, you're supposed to. I'm supposed to be scared of you. Not. Like so, that's the same thing like happened with Roman. But what about Drew McIntyre? He looks good at everything. Brolic, long hair. No, everything. he don't. I don't he's subscribe to that. Not as good looking as Karrion Cross. This sounds. He wild. surely is. He's not. He's not. Karrion I close on that. Pretty low key. So, do you think that Cody got away your head because he has lips to make him like ah, he's not that. Nah, because that lip shit made me check out as Jack Swagger. So no. No, 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 no. no. I'm saying that because Cody's very good looking. Do you think people find him relatable because no, no, no? I think people find him because he knows how to tell a story. Cool. He not does that, everything. It, it. And the thing, the thing about it. He's an Amer his whole gimmick is American. He's always gone on his looks. He's yeah. Even he's with the, the smoke and mirrors with the mask, he made that yeah. shit work. Always gone on. Carrying Cross is trying to be this evil psychotic guy. Nigga, you look like a model. Hot. How am I supposed to be scared of you? I just like when he says TikTok. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> so wait, hold up. So hold up. So hold up. So hold up. Can you give Vince credit for what he did? Yes. That's why he put his mask on his face. That's OD. He was trying bro, to give him a gladiator look. <laughs> bro, I'm telling you this right now. Like, when you look at... There's certain people, when you look at them, you're like, I'm not scared of you. Okay, so right now, who's the scariest person on on the roster right now? Bray Wyatt. Oh. You see how Bray Wyatt looks? <laughs> he, he actually... JoJo caught her a good one. He's actually hot. He's Chompa. hot in real life. No, she's not scared of good looks. Like, he's Chompa. hot. Huh? Champa. Champa yeah, looks like a psychopath. <laughs> well, his song, like, his song like go, rides, his song says, "No one will survive." So I'm pretty like sure rides, it's scary. Drive through the night, trying to hang black folks. No, that's a bit much. I'm not and saying I, he does that. Yeah, but that's a bit much, don't you think? Like he looks scary. Nigga, I, I think I, you could have been good with the he looks scary, and we would have understood that. Bro, like certain people just look. Oh. Like Somebody just mentioned the fucking um, Maximum Male Models. Yo, there was a clip on Raw where they Fire. were... First of all, I was like, Fire. I think I smacked down, so it already had fucked me up. But it was when Chad Gable and Otis was walking past them, and old girl had stopped them and was like, he's perfect. Talking about Otis. Yeah, I saw that. Yo, I, I lost it. I said, it. yo, the one thing that I love about wrestling right now, especially on the WWE e side of things, is the little stuff. That that little segment, I was I was like, oh, sh I was like, yo, is Otis going to turn on him now? On oh, my guy, Chad Gable, that brought him up from the ashes? What are we talking about? There's no Let's, way they could break up Alpha Academy. What? Carrying Cross too pretty. He's hot. He can't get over because he's too pretty. Like, I don't, I don't know. Those that are those that are watching, or, or you know, will be watching and listening. Let us know what your thoughts are. Why is it so hard for Karrion so Cross? That's your opinion. Why is it so hard if you're not signed on to Karrion Cross? What is it about him that doesn't bro, make like, you sign on? Bro looks perfect. He has great looks. <laughs> his his hair is 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 done really. He just well. became he just became a purple belt in um karate. I don't care about his karate. At the end of the day, him and Matt Riddle. Why did say that? Why did say that karate? Because that's how it is karate. And then his 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 girls his wife is like a baddie. Like yo, come on, son. Like like who am I connected? I'm scared of you. I'm scared of you. I'm supposed to be scared of you. I mean, sometimes you could be scared of the pretty ones. No, yo, no. look back at yo. You ever seen American Psycho? 
He was skinny and looked like a crackhead. But he was bagging bitches. Because he was crazy. Y'all like crazy men. No. He got money. You like crazy women. And he don't got that on me. I don't like crazy. I don't like crazy men. Yeah, okay. Anyway. I mean, <laughs> my, my, my dude, Janelle. they end up being crazy after the fact. After I don't know. That's Bro, my fault. They're walking down highways <laughs> for you. On that note, we're going to sign off because I won't bury myself any further than um, I already have. And some of them, and some of them <laughs> lying about high blood pressure, but take airlines. We're not going to do this. And, and, and on a boat this. right now. All right. We're not going to do this. We're, and on a boat. This, you know. um, but real quick, we're not going to do this. Y'all burying the fuck out of me. Like, I did something to y'all. The fuck? Three of us have you don't, you don't, you don't think, we dealt with in the past. You don't think I'm already not traumatized? The fuck? <laughs> I'm over myself. Yo, um, I can't wait until the documentary on us comes out. <laughs> that shit's gonna be fire. Man, listen, that's definitely a Vice TV. <laughs> it's definitely Vice. Vice, if you're looking for a chronological oh. story of the Java Tears podcast, and you got first dibs, I promise. Uh, but before we go, I read a, a quick, I found a quick article, um, Mr. Black, that it's funny that, that we were talking about the sponsorship stuff. <laughs> And you were saying that it's going to happen a lot more. So to your point, there's now, according to the Hollywood Reporter, WWE is on track to make between 14 and $15 million in sponsorship revenue for WrestleMania 39, a new record for the event. WWE is already planning on having a sponsor for the post-WrestleMania press conference on Peacock, which much much like they did for the Royal Rumble. Um and they would say another financial success from the Royal Rumble, the Mountain Dew Pitch Black match, is set to be replicated. Um, says that there will be wow. surprises at this year's WrestleMania, likely involving the new sponsor, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. $14 million, baby. New day. Balling. Balling. But on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for joining us on the, our post-WrestleMania episode of the Jabba Tears podcast, our home, our home edition. Post-Royal Rumble. Post-Royal Rumble. What did I say? WrestleMania? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm already past April. So, um, you guys can always make make sure to subscribe to our page on YouTube. Um, follow us on Instagram and on on La Twitter. Uh, we will be back um, this Saturday, NXT Vengeance on Peacock. Make sure to tune in um, where you have Apollo Crews versus Carmelo Hayes at a two out of three falls match. That's going to be hot. I got this. I got this. I got this. Apollo, I mean... um. You know, um, Carmelo Hayes is a tough opponent, but I got this. this. I got this. I got All right, this. and then you have um, Braun Breaker defending his NXT title against um, Grayson Waller. Um, you have um, Roxanne Perez um, defending her title against Toxic Attraction on um, both girls. It's a triple threat match. Um, oh, okay. On oh, some DX shit. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, and I think there are maybe one or two other matches, um, but tune in, it's going to be live on Peacock, eight o'clock on Saturday, um, Friday, House of Glory, Queens, Amazora, um, CCW, South Jersey, just trying to think if there are any other indie shows. Oh, MLW, if you're in the Philly area, they'll be at the 2300 Arena, um, this weekend. And then at about two weeks time, we'll be back at Legends for Elimination Chamber. So make sure to RSVP for that and get ready for that as we are on the road to WrestleMania. And then following that, uh, we will be um, back at, well, the boys will be there, back at Legends for Revolution for A-Dubs. So just make sure to look out for that. Yeah, I won't be here that weekend. That's when we're going to Houston for Joy Birthday. I won't be. I didn't. I thought it was the weekend after, but then when they said March 4th, I was like, I won't be here. But um, but make sure to RSVP, come out, support. Um, anything else coming up that I can think about? No. All right. We'll be back next week. Um, I don't know if we'll be back in studio, but we'll be here. Um, make sure to join us. Hashtag black excellence. Happy black history month, guys. This is the top of the month. We got some cool interviews lined up uh, for black history month. So just make sure to look out for that. And of course, of course, to anyone, Chisel Adonis. Black History episode. One of the best hosts with the most is Chisel Adonis that definitely hosted our weigh-in. We'll be back for his annual Black History Month episode, so tune in for that. That will be in an upcoming week, so just make sure to look out for that. Um, it's always a good time with him, um, so we're excited about that. And he he brought it up to you, so he's he's all, he's just as excited as we are, so 
It's good to have, you know, people. It's good to have people that, you know, consistently support us and want to come on and everything like that. Um, as always, I'm Janelle from Make Sure here with Starbuckers and Mr. Black. Hashtag Black Excellence. Hashtag We Are Out. I was over, got the hands in motion. If you go with rolling, no need to focus. Traveling states and over oceans. You gotta wait till your coast chosen. Try to have lines outside the show, like every part of a lease is at Barnes and Noble.